Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to share with you how I make steel cut oats in my pressure cooker. This thing is simply amazing and anything that I can use it for is the way that I go for cooking. Uh, so um, I was introduced to steel cut oats actually when I took care of a lady who was very, very ill and one of the um, things that she could eat, it, had, it was specific that it needed to be organic steel cut oats, uh, not your rolled oats or uh, instant oats or anything like that. And I personally did not like oatmeal prior to this. Um, there were times where, because I would prepare the meals for her, so oats being one of them, and I did it stove top, and it took from start to finish about um, 30 minutes, 45 maybe, um, because they do take longer to cook. Um, and, um, but their consistency was quite different from like rolled oats. For me personally, um, oatmeal, I found in my experience, I was used to kind of like the instant the packets. Um, and it just being really mushy and I didn't like the consistency. I actually am a garbage disposal in the sense of like, I like to eat everything, but oatmeal was definitely one of those things that I, it wasn't palatable for me. So I would prepare her oats and then there were times where she was just too sick because she did have cancer. She was too sick to eat them and I didn't want to see them go to waste. So I would eat them and then I learned to love them. And so I'm a steel cut oats type of gal when it comes to do with my oatmeal. So I wanted to share with you, um, I use a Cuisinart uh, six, CP600 and um, this is the only one that I've ever used and so this is the one that I share and this is the one that um, our girl recently won through my giveaway. So um, I just want to share with you a couple of pieces. I didn't read the manual when it came to actually cleaning it and I did not realize that this too came apart. So this goes in here like this and then you pull on this to bring it apart and then this rubber piece if for whatever reason um, you need to put it back to if it comes off you just put it back like this so I just slide this right into here and then push that in and I want to share with you so I have for uh, steel cut oats for the most part usually when you're you, you're cooking uh, in a pressure cooker you usually uh, need to bring down your liquid amount um, to your solids but for this one specifically you do use the oats uh, the same measurements so if I did the stove top versus if I did it on the pressure cooker it would be the same way so I'm gonna go ahead and get this started and then I want to share with you a couple of other things that I have uh, made over the last uh, since yesterday and today so I have one cup of steel cut oats one cup um, spreads for my husband and I over about three to four days and then I have three cups of filtered water. I filter my water using what's called a Berkey water system. Uh, it is countertop and I pour the um, sink water into the filter and it filters through and removes everything or impurities including fluoride. So I have poured my water and I have poured my oats into here. You wanna make sure that is the, seal, the lid is on and sealed, locked. And then you also, a very important little piece is your pressure valve. So this little guy goes right on top here yeah. and um, you want to make sure that the setting of the valve and I'll bring the camera over to you but I just wanted to tell you first the pressure of the valve is on pressure or the setting of the valve is on pressure not pressure release because then all of your your pressure will be coming out make sure that it's plugged in I've done that problem before where I thought it was broken but it wasn't plugged in um, and then for oats you're going to put it on high pressure for three minutes. Oops, let me cancel that. Three minutes. So you just go, you have a low pressure, you have high pressure, you have a browning setting, a saute setting, a simmer, and a keep warm setting. Um, the one that I most frequently use is your high pressure, or if I'm making something um, like a beef and broccoli or a rice or that type of thing, then I'll use either my browning, my saute, the most frequently used I, uh, button is the, or setting is high pressure. So I'm gonna do it for three minutes. You can see my timer is even going away. Uh, sometimes you can't even see the number three on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. The way that a pressure cooker works is it has to uh, increase in pressure or pressurize. So it pressurizes, that takes usually uh, for a three minute item, it probably takes between um, five, three to five minutes to pressurize and then it cooks uh, on high pressure for three minutes and then um, you have to release the pressure. So from start to finish, your steel cut oats that historically would uh, take on the stove top 
probably about 30 to 45 minutes will now probably take you about 15 minutes from start to finish. So while this is cooking, um, let me go ahead and share with you. I will bring this phone over here so you can see uh, this is the valve here that I was talking about and making sure that it is on pressure setting and not the pressure release setting. You can see how tired this pressure cooker is. It's very loved. And then here's the settings that I was sharing with you. You have low, you have high, browning, saute, simmer, keep warm, and then you have your menu. You use the menu option to get to uh, toggle through these different um, settings here and then your timer to uh, choose your desired time and then start and or cancel just depending on um, what you're wanting to do. Now, I won't be able to stay live with you while it's cooking, but you can trust me when I say that it is much, much quicker than stovetop, and I will be sharing with you the end result. Um, but I did want to share with you, uh, yesterday I made a vegetable soup, and um, so what I did was I, uh, you, you, you can use your desired vegetables, um, but I did carrots and potato. Those are harder vegetables, a little bit more firm, so they require a little bit more time than something like your uh, zucchini or your cabbage um, and celery. So I did, um, I did uh, in my soup yesterday, I did uh, carrots and uh, potatoes. I cut them up, you know, washed them, prepared them, roughly chopped them up, and I cooked them with a cup no, four cups of water um, and a Spanish seasoning that I use, it's called sofrito. And I cook those for one minute on high pressure. And then I added celery, zucchini, and cabbage and into the, um, the carrots and the um, potatoes for another minute. And I found this because I do mainly uh, vegetables um, plant-based is kind of my, my preference as far as nutritional lifestyle goes, but I don't, that doesn't mean I don't eat meat. I just definitely prefer to, to eat fruits and vegetables as my primary source of nutrition. Um, but I did find, because one of the things that I used a lot was the little, uh, bouillons, um, or consume if you're Hispanic, uh, use those. Let me grab those really quick. At my local market, I found a veggie one that it didn't have any, um, uh, byproduct, animal byproduct. So I was pretty excited about that. So I added that in. And so my soup was ready and I'm going to show it to you. I'm just going to open the lid first, but my soup was ready. And, uh, from start to finish about 15 minutes, everything. It was just, it's just, it was amazing. Let me, uh, open it up and then I'll bring the, um, thank you. I'll bring the camera over here this way. And then I also wanted to share that while I was waiting, uh, to go live with you to share about the oats, um, I did chicken and then also made the chicken broth. So let me just share that with you. So here is my vegetable soup that I was telling you about that I will be eating in just a moment. Look at these, look at this. Everything is just, you know, perfectly cooked. Nothing is falling apart. Um, you know, the, veg the, the potatoes are still in their place. They're not mushy. Uh, I, was, I was very, very impressed. This was my first time making this. Um, on my pressure cooker, so I was really excited. And then here's the chicken I shared with you. I did chicken, it was thawed chicken. This is chicken breast, it's about four pounds. Um, and I cooked that in, sorry, it's kind of sealed because it's hot. Uh, in about um, six cups of uh, water, filtered water. I cooked that for 10 minutes on my pressure cooker. Uh, I'll be using that to make uh, a, um, authentic uh, Puerto Rican dish later tonight called arroz con pollo. So I'll go live when I'm gonna share about that just so you can kind of see how that works. Sorry, I'm trying to set this up here. Um, but yeah, I guess all to say that, um, you know, you would not have been able to um, cook any of these things in the amount of time that it spent me. Plus I can walk away, I don't really need to check on it, I don't need to stir anything, anything like that. As you can tell, I love, love, love the pressure cooker. I earn nothing by sharing how much I love it with you, um, but I do uh, gain so much knowing that uh, what I share has helped you. So um, please share in comments below um, how you enjoy your oats uh, or any questions that you may have thus far. Um, I know that I did a post and so if you've had a chance to do that, but yeah, share and also, you know, feel free to add your friends and your family to any of uh, what I have going on because I love to share the wealth and knowledge that I have been provided 
And um, yeah, I hope this helps you and I will be uh, sharing uh, the outcome. Uh, the time it says is 157, but I have my clocks ahead of time and I didn't check the start time. But you can trust that the oats will be ready in no time and easily enjoyed. Thank you so much.